Hey there, guys. It's Vampire Preacher. You know me, I know. I know you. I know you. <laughs> well, if you guys didn't see the tweet and you didn't see the title of this stream, then let me tell you, you have no idea what you're in for. So I'll tell you. We are going to be unboxing because <laughs> you know how they said the new Waves Marvel Legends wouldn't be out until sometime in February. Yeah, that was a lie. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> Instead, we're going to today be unboxing. Wow. In case you guys didn't notice, I actually got a new setup for uh, the hands. We got a lot more space here than we used to. So this is going to be great. Uh, we're going to be unboxing today the Demo Goblin wave of Spider-Man Marvel Legends action figures. I'm really excited about this wave. I... I've got some favorites, and there's some new effects that I want to dig into, and I really want to see, because they just look like they're going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but enough of me talking, let's get into what we've got here. Uh, we've got a pretty good diversity between uh, regular f just Spider-Man figure, or heroes and villains, is what I wanted to say. I can talk, I can. Uh... And some regular figures, and some that are a little bit different. Some that we might not be so familiar with, and some, as gamers, eh? Yeah. That, uh, we might, uh, we might be a little bit familiar with. So, let's get started with one of the villains of the wave. The first one that we're going to take care of today is Marvel's White Rabbit. Uh, White Rabbit is... She's an older character that's had a recent resurgence, and she looks real weird. Uh, cause yeah, she does. Look at her. She looks like a Playboy bunny mixed with the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. There you go. Uh, she was actually voted for a fan favorite from a couple years back with the Hasbro polls. Uh, so they've been wanting us to get this figure for a while. So... Let's see what all the hubbub was about, shall we? So, of course, on the outside we've got our standard window pane here where we see our figure, our accessories. We've got our artistic rendering on the side here and an actual photo of the figure on the back along with a blurb all about Dr. Lorena Dobson. Yeah. Crime queen pin extraordinaire who, you know, dresses up like a Playboy bunny mixed with Lewis Carroll's madness. We also have the remainder of the wave here, which we do have all of the figures of the wave this time. Uh, as we don't have any ones that don't have build figure pieces or anything like that. Uh, even the upcoming... There are two upcoming waves, if you guys didn't know about. Uh, the Super Scroll wave which will hopefully be on here next week. Uh, and if not, then it'll be here very soon. And the wave after that that's been announced is the Black Widow wave. It's the next one that's got a figure that doesn't have a build to figure piece, but it's Taskmaster. And I love me some Taskmaster. Inside the box, the backing is that Spider-Man web design that we've seen a couple times already. Now, we've actually got a two-tray system here once again, uh, because this is our build-to-figure piece for the Demo Goblin. This is a hefty glider. I mean, this thing's actually got some weight to it. It's because of this I knew what figure was in the box that I received before I even opened it because of this glider. It is a hefty glider. And it's got something that we haven't seen before, its own stand. So that's kind of cool, which means we can have this glider just kind of popped up on here with a ball joint. To make it so that we've got a actually flying goblin flying on his glider. And with the way this setup is for the stand here, it'll balance the whole figure. 
that's really cool. We'll actually have a flying goblin instead of just a goblin on a glider that you need a third party stand for. They just did it. And as we saw from the Brothor wave, I'm not going to be assembling the figure off screen. I'm going to be putting all the pieces for it right over here. So that at the end of this, we can put it all together and see just what it looks like. Now, inside the packaging, I've heard that you can actually get this uh, explosive tip off of the umbrella if you don't always want it to be firing out bang, 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 bang. Uh, but that's something I'm going to probably do off stream because it's probably going to need the boiling water trick. Uh, I've heard of people doing it by just kind of forcing it, but this, this seems too pliable for me to just want to force that. <clears throat> but let's get into the figure herself. So, we have, again, the second place winner of the fan poll, the White Rabbit. Uh, it's It's been a minute since that fan poll happened, and we finally just now, in 2020, got this figure. Uh, as a note, the bow tie I've already noticed is not a uh, static piece. It's not just molded onto here. It can actually be removed if you so chose. Uh, we can already tell this mane of hair in the back is going to greatly affect our neck articulation. Speaking of, let's take a look and see what that's looking like. That's all of our downward neck articulation. She's actually getting held up by that bow to make it so that it's not going down any further. And going back, that's all that we've got there. Um, not a whole lot of range. Again, like I said, this mane of hair is keeping that neck from going any further back. And the bow tie keeps it from going any further forward. Uh, for our shoulder articulation. A little bit better than a T-pose. Not much, but a little bit. I'll take it. I will take it. <clears throat> Unlike these, which I will not take anymore. Hasbro, 90 degree elbows are not where it's at. I'm sorry, they're not. This nonsense, this bullshit, it's gotta stop. It's gotta stop now. Being able to bend the arm the other way is only good for action poses where I want it to look like Spider-Man just broke her arm. Which isn't even a cool thing to say. That's kind of a crud thing to say, just as a thing to be said. Uh, and, I mean, come on now. That's not even 90 degrees. Hasbro, get it together. For her wrist articulation, it looks like both the wrists are going to be the standard in and out wrist cut. Uh, nothing really notable there. Uh, the jacket is soft goods, and it looks like it can come off decently easily. Uh, so if you need a white corset to make any figures for, oh, I don't know, making a more comic accurate old school version of Emma Frost, I've heard that this... Uh, yeah, and it looks like this whole piece here with the pocket watch does, it can be removed, but I also noticed that there's a hole right here. If you look very closely, there's a black hole there. So uh, it'll be Emma Frost if she got shot. Uh, that's not so great. Um, for our ab crunch. That's all the sideways movement we're getting. Like that, that's it. Forward and back. That's forward. That's back. At least we're getting something backward. Because we're not getting it in any other direction. Which is just pitiful. Uh, of course, there's no waist cut. Because <laughs> why do you need it? You've got the waist swivel here. Yeah, we still need something better than this, because that's... That's not good. <clears throat> For our 
hip articulation. All right, that's not a bad range of movement we've got there. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, we of course have the thigh cuts. If we didn't, I'd be asking a lot of questions. Uh, we've got the double jointed knees. Which go back a decent way, but they're actually impeded on by some plastic at the top of the fur boots there. Uh, speaking of which, we do actually have boot cuts, so that's a good thing. Uh, for our rocker ankles, which we do have, we can go a alright degree out and an okay degree in. Uh, we're not going the usual painful and disturbing degrees because of all of the fur with these leg warmers here. Uh, we can go a pretty decent way forward and almost all the way back on points. Is this a great figure? No. Is this the worst figure I've seen as of late? No, but it's... This character was the second place winner of the Hasbro fan poll of figures that fans wanted made. Wanted made now. Do you think it did it justice, Hasbro? Look into your heart of hearts and you tell me, did this figure please the fans? Nope. You and I both know it didn't. Uh, the accessory is... Alright. I suppose, I mean, it's an umbrella with an explosive tip, and I can't even really get her hands at the right angles for it, because she only has the single jointed elbows. Maybe that would have been fixed if you guys could ever give any of your female figures ever a double jointed elbow. And yeah, I can kind of possibly make it work for a pose, but it's not going to be a great pose. It kind of works. All in all, if I've got to give the figure a rating, which, of course, I've got to give the figure a rating, you're here. Um, she's a five. She's a five. Hasbro... You did some neat things with the new mold for the hair and the head and the bow tie and even the umbrella. You did a whole lot wrong here. <clears throat> She's a passable figure. She's part of Spider-Man's rogues gallery, so that's cool. She's a new villain and a female villain, which we don't get a whole lot of. So that's kind of neat. But she's not a good figure. You need to work on your engineering for me to say that you've made a good female figure, Hasbro. Get on that. It's 2020, and Black Widow has her entire line all to herself. Maybe you should make it so that that's a decent line. Alright. <clears throat> We're going to go from a lesser-known villain to a lesser-known hero now with our next one. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm real excited about this figure. It is Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. Now, if you guys have been keeping any kind of track with Marvel, he's actually getting his own movie in the MCU. So, getting ahead of that, here he is, in his comic book form. So, before we get into the figure itself, let's take a look at what we've got here. So, We've, of course, got our window pane front, our description of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, our artistic rendering of him on the side, a picture of literally just the figure on the back, the line up here, and our blurb about Shang-Chi just being, like, this awesome martial artist and warrior for justice! We, of course, have the same backing that we saw with White Rabbit. I think they're all going to have a very similar backing to this, where it's the Spider-Man web design there. Shang-Chi here comes with a ton of accessories. 
and that makes me genuinely happy. Not only are we talking about the body of the Demo Goblin here, which, no, yep, that's the, uh, there's our torso and our beaten up cape, which might actually look really good on the Jack-O-Lantern figure from a couple years ago. There's also a peg hole on his back. That's interesting. It's most interesting. <clears throat> we will save that for later when he all comes together. Look at all these hands. Look at them. Look at them, chat. Look at all these hands. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten sets of hands, if you include the ones that are on his wrists, which, of course, I do. Plus two nunchucks. Now, I will admit, I'm a little bit disheartened that the nunchucks, they, um, they're just rigid. I wouldn't really recommend bending these, and it's not, uh, like it's chain. Which, we've seen actual chain in some Marvel Legends before. But, I believe they've got a reason for doing that. Especially with this one. We'll explore that in a minute. Whew. Just the sheer number of hands with this guy. Now, of course, looking at him without knowing anything about the source material, you guys can always just look at this and go, Wow, that is the coolest Liu Kang figure I've ever seen. I am ready for Mortal Kombat! And yes, you'd be correct. It, It's a generic kung fu guy. So yes, if you so chose to, not that I'm saying this is my personal suggestion, because this is one of the harder to find figures because of exactly that, uh, you could very easily get this figure and go, you know what, I'm not all about paying the ridiculous prices for the Liu Kang figures that are out there for my Mortal Kombat collection. Or, I just kind of want a generic Kung Fu guy to put up against uh, my Bruce Lee figure that I got. Here's your guy to do it. Bam! There you go. I know that they did a Bruce Lee figure. I believe Revlotech did him, if I'm not mistaken. It could have been Figure Arts, could have been Revlotech. I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. Before we get into all of these hands, I'm so happy that they gave him so many sets of hands. And, you know what, actually, before we get into the figure, let's explore these hands. So we've got the straight hand here. We've seen these with different various running figures. Uh, we've seen them with Quicksilver, we've seen them with Speed Demon, but they work really well here as kind of a chopping hand. We've got a set of fists for punching. That's what fists do. We have a set of gripping hands, which I can only assume are meant specifically for our nunchaku. Because, yeah, that fits pretty darn well. We have a set of the Talon Grips here. Which I would not suggest using on the Nunchucks, because they're going to just fall out. Uh, but this is indeed a finger style in martial arts. And we've got something akin to... I believe that's crane style, but I might be wrong. Uh, where you could easily put a sigh in his fingers as well. Uh, now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I kind of do wish we would have gotten monkey, which is just hands curled up like this, which is another popular way to hit someone. Uh, <laughs> there's no other way to say it. It's a popular way to hit people. Uh, <laughs> but this is enough. I'm actually really cool with this. This is a whole mess of hands 
which may stay with him. They may go to Iron Fist. Who knows? Or I might just have the two of them sparring, because that seems like it'd be a really fun idea for a photo. All right. Let's get into articulation before I just keep on going on and on about how much I love all these hands. For our neck articulation. <coughs> Minus that snapping there that sounded like a fatality. He can look down really well. Uh, he can only look up so well, and looking up like this is actually a really weird angle with his neck here. Uh, it's mostly because of this mullet of hair that he's got. But that's okay, I'm not going to have him flying through the air like this. Which just looks so weird. I'm probably going to have him jumping down at people more like this. Uh, which just looks awesome. He does have butterfly shoulders, which if there's any figure to give me butterfly shoulders with, it's all of the Spider-Man and this. It's all of the Spider-Man and this. Daredevil 2, Daredevil 2, but all of the Spider-Man and this figure. Because he needs it. Uh, so the butterfly shoulders are already inherently just awesome. Love it. For his shoulder articulation... Better than a T-pose. I'll take it. He, of course, has the bicep swivels. The double-jointed elbows. Which we better have gotten from him. Ladies and gentlemen, you love it. I love it. It's that good flex. Yes! Thank you, Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. Thank you for actually being able to flex the way you should. It appears as though all of his hands uh, are the standard in and out wrist cut. Would have liked to have seen at least some of them be the up and down sword cut. Probably the gripping hands here. Because these just seem like they would have really benefited from being the up and down sword cut. But this isn't bad. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take that. I will definitely take that. Uh, we, of course, have an ab crunch on him, which can go... Pretty far forward and a decent ways back. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, he's got a lot of sculpting back here that's preventing him from going any further back, but it's not bad. He does, of course, have the waist cut here, cleverly hidden by his black belt. For our hip articulation. All right. About as good as we got from White Rabbit. That's not bad. We, of course, have the thigh cuts here, the double-jointed knees. That's what I'm talking about. If it weren't for him having a little bit of extra flash down here, that would be an absolutely perfect, and I mean absolutely perfect, flex. I love it. He even has boot cuts without having boots. So... Yeah, that's awesome. For our weird bare feet, uh, we've got the rocker ankles, which can go a disturbing degree in, a painful degree out, as they should. Can go actually really far forward. And can go all the way on point back. Guys, it might be a little bit early to say this. This might be my favorite figure of the wave. They did some great things with this figure. If they want to showcase just how awesome Shang-Chi really is, this is the way to do it. Give us a figure that genuinely makes people be interested. Like, give us a figure where, yeah, he can... I look at this. That just looks cool. And him with the nunchucks here. That's just awesome looking. That's intimidating. I love this. 
Heck, if you want to even go all Matrix meme here, which, when's the last time anyone thought of a Matrix meme? Me. Look at that. Well, I I'm actually going to go back to the hand cam here. Look at that. I mean, staring you down, Nunchaku behind or under his arm, doing the come here hand. That's amazing! This is cool! He's a dynamic figure that poses the way he should for being someone that can be as flexible as he is. I love this figure. I love this figure. I love this figure. There are some great figures coming up later on in this unboxing that... Our fan favorites that people have been dying to get their hands on. Including the reason why we've got the title, completing the me and the boys meme. And this is a figure that I am gushing over right now. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. Shang-Chi here, he's going to be a solid. I'm gonna give him a rating, and it's it's gonna be a high one. Shang-Chi here is getting. I'm going to give him a 9. Let me explain. Let me explain. So he's getting a 9 out of 10. The only reason why he's not getting something higher. With Beast, we saw them do both an ab crunch and a ball joint. Or uh, ab swivel. This is a figure that would have benefited from both. That is my only gripe. That and he looks weird when you put his head back. That's it. That is all my complaints for this figure. Period. Beyond that, this is fantastic. He's getting a solid 9 for me. This is awesome. I love this figure. He's going to be a prominent part of my display. And yeah, I think I might have even found my pose for him. This is really cool. I'm really happy with that. I'm genuinely happy that they gave us... A figure of a lesser known hero who's going to become huge. He's he's gonna be huge in today's war, guys. I'm not gonna lie, he's gonna be huge. <laughs> he just made him cool. Again, my recommendation to you guys if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, if you're a Marvel fan, if you like old school kung fu movies, whatever, get this figure. Get this figure. I know him and one of our later figures are the hard ones to find for this wave. Honestly, between the two, don't let me, let me not speak ahead of time. I will say at the end of the stream today, who is my recommended get for the wave, but it's back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got our T-square back. To let us know just how big our figures are. So, Shang Chi here is measuring in at just about six inches, maybe six and a quarter, because uh, I'm not quite getting him to lay. Here, let's move our Nunchaku out of the way. Get those feet as flat as we can. Yeah, he's right at about six and a quarter inches. And White Rabbit here is measuring in at, huh, well, she's not really fighting fair with these ears. Uh, she measures in at right about six inches. With the ears, she measures in at about seven. That's not really fighting fair. All right, so, you guys obviously see a pattern we're doing here. We're doing villain hero, villain hero, villain hero, villain hero. Six times around, so villain hero, you get the you get the idea. You get the idea. So, let's go to our next villain of the day then. Who's a I'm not even sure if I can call him a villain. He's kind of a villain. He's kind of not a villain. It's complicated. Comics are weird. I'm just gonna go with that. Comics are weird. If you don't know who I'm talking about, as I'm trying to open them up, I'm talking about 
Superior Octopus. This is part of a very weird comic arc that happened for a while, where Peter Parker was dead, Otto Octavius took over the body of Peter Parker. It was weird. Uh, he became the Superior Spider-Man. And then Peter took back over his own body, and Otto got his own body based on that body, and this is it. He gets the tentacles back, and again, it's a weird comic arc. But, let's get into what we see in here today. So, we've got Superior Octopus Otto Octavius. Uh, of course, that's exactly what it says on the side here. We've got our comic book rendering, and we've got... Yeah, again, a picture of the figure, the line here, and... Again, he's... It's complicated. He's both villain and hero, so it's weird. Again, our background is that same spider web that we had before. Inside the box, we've got yet another one with two trays. And a whole mess of tentacles here. Oh. I've watched enough anime to know where this is going. So, let's... Seems like popping off the ends here is the easiest way to get these tentacles out. Because they seem to have that as the ending, and if I tried to take it out the other way, it'd just take longer. Now, I will say it's, again, kind of a travesty, just as it was with the older Doc Ock figure that we got, which isn't that old. Uh, it's only from a few waves ago. We got a classic Doc Ock. Once again, the tentacles are not bendable. Which is, in my mind, a major misstep. Uh, it's, it's Dr. Otto Octavius. I know that... Having bendable wire over plastic is not the best for the long run, but it's Doc Ock. Give him some bendy tentacles. I only have so much money to keep on redoing the tentacles with USB lights, as has been seen all over the web. All right. We have Demo Goblin's arms there. So, what popped off of his back before is actually the module that has all of the arms go into it. Which means... It's with these guys here. Yeah, there we go. That's as close as we're getting it, because <laughs> I don't know what's going on here with this thing. Again, I'm probably going to either rebend these tentacles or out and out replace them the way we did with the previous Dr. Octopus. Let's put those to the side for right now so we can actually get into our articulation on him. So, for our superior octopus, he can look down decently well. He can look up actually pretty well. Uh, he also has butterfly shoulders, which, I mean, hey, thank you Hasbro for actually giving us butterfly shoulders for a Spider-Man. Uh, so that's a nice thing. That's a very nice touch. For our shoulder articulation...
It's giving me a little bit of a hard time getting them up here, but yeah, we've got better than a T-Pose going. So that's again a nice thing. We of course have the bicep swivels, the double jointed elbows. Doc. Doc. You look at me and you tell me that's that good flex. You you look at me and you lie to me. That's not that good flex and you know it. Uh, he has these wrist cuffs here, which are of course not uh, secured on. They're just kind of held here by the fact that he's got hands to keep them in place. Uh, speaking of, his hands have the standard in and out wrist cut, not the up and down sword cut. Uh, for his torso, we only have a ab swivel, for whatever reason, instead of an ab crunch. But he's got a decent range of motion side to side. Uh, forward, he can actually go pretty decent ways forward. And back, he's not really doing much of anything. I'm not going to lie, Hasbro, if you are going to give us a ab swivel instead of an ab crunch, this is the figure to make that. This That's actually a decent enough ab swivel. I'm not going to complain to you, especially since he also has a waist cut. <sighs> Just a lot of questions that I have as to your choices, Hasbro. I question your life choices. For our hip articulation... Not bad about the standard that we've seen today. We've, of course, got the thigh cuts here. The double-jointed knees. Which can go pretty much all the way back. Uh, there's a little bit of flash in the knee here, making it so he can't go all the way back. But it's not bad. Uh, we also have boot cuts on him, which is a nice touch. If they'll turn. That was a pretty frozen joint there. For our feet, of course, we've got the rocker ankles with a painful degree in, a disturbing, disgust, disgusting degree out. Uh, it can go pretty far forward and can go all the way on point back. Uh, I will note that his feet are kind of huge. You know what they say about big feet really hard to find shoes. Bazinga! So, all in all, do I love this figure? God, no. Do I think it's a great Dr. Octopus figure? No. Will I be displaying it in my Spidey collection? I honestly God don't know. Am I going to be bending these tentacles a different way so that I can get them to actually do something? Because, again, not having bendy wire in Doc Ock's tentacles is kind of an oversight. Yeah. Um. But it's a second Doc Ock figure, so progress. Before we go too far, we got our T-square back. And the good Dr. Octopus here, let's take his back piece off again so we can get a more accurate height on him. Uh, he's coming in at just about six and a quarter inches. So, here's so that you guys can see it even better. Instead of me just looking at it and telling you, here's what you got. Uh, so yeah, he's right at about six and a quarter inches there. Uh, again, it's mainly these tentacles that are really throwing me off. They just don't seem to have any good way as we saw for me messing around with these for far too long. I just don't really seem to have any good way to lie on his back piece here to make it look natural, interesting, effective. If I gotta give him a rating, which I do, I'm gonna say Superior Octopus here is a six. He's He's got some cool articulation to him. He's got a neat design. Uh, he's got some new molding, like the hands having these uh, metal rivet joints in the knuckles to him, so that's kind of cool. Uh, he's got a really great ab swivel, if I've ever said those words before. Hmm, let's not talk about that. I, I hate ab swivels, but he's got a decent one. 
Yeah, he's a six. He's not a great figure. He's passable. I'm probably not going to be displaying him much in my display. Uh -huh. He's just not my version of Doc Ock. We've already gotten that version, and I like that version. Moving on. So, remember how I told you guys we were going to start getting into some other media here? You remember. You remember from earlier in the stream. Well... Hey there, gamers! What's up, gamers? Get ready, because we now have not one, but two, count them, two different versions of Spider-Man from the Gamerverse, which brings our total up to three. Three Spider-Man suits just from the games. Now, is that entirely true? Well, we know that answer. It's not entirely true. So... For our first of the two Spider-Men, we have the Spider Armor Mark III. Let's get into it, shall we? Of course, we've got our window pane front here, our artistic rendering. In this case, it looks like an artistic in-game render from uh, Spider-Man PS4, and our picture here of the figure for Spider-Man Mark III. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Seeing this figure, I got excited not by the armor itself, uh, but by the accessory. Let me tell you what I mean. So, inside of here, we've got Spider-Man. He's a criminal, that's who he is. And the Spider-Man PS4 logo. The only different back that we've had all day. It's probably going to be the same way with our other Spider-Man PS4 costume. We've got our first of the Demo Goblin's legs to be assembled later. We've of course got our Spider-Man in his Mark III armor. And we've got this. This is an accessory I'm very excited about. So, starting with the first Spider-Man Game Reverse figure that we got, we started getting Spider-Man web accessories. Uh, specifically, then, we got the strand webbing that comes when he thwips. This is different, and I, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I love this. It looks like I got something on my finger, but I love what this is. So... Anyone that's watched anything with Spider-Man or played the Spider-Man game knows Spidey likes to thwip up enemies' faces sometimes. Uh, it's a great way to get them to stop attacking him. So this is specifically supposed to... Hey, Superior Octopus, you're going to be useful for something today. It specifically goes around enemies' faces so that he can thwip them up to stop them. That's awesome! This is amazing. Give me more of these effects. Hasbro, if you've done any, any one thing right, it's this. Give me as many Spider-Man effects as you can. Give me a web all over someone's face. Give me, well, we'll see you later. Let's get into the figure himself right now. For our neck articulation. We've got a decent degree downward and an all right degree. It's not going great backward. Uh, a lot of that's in the flash right here at the back of the collar uh, that prevents him from looking up too far. Uh, we've got the same kind of backpack here on him as we had on Superior Octopus, but of course, this one we can't do anything with. And you and I both know that's just going to negatively affect our articulation. For our shoulder articulation. Um, we can get about a T-pose out of him. It's not bad, it's not great. It's about a T-pose. Uh, he does have the double, or double jointed. He's got the bicep swivel here, the double jointed elbows. Okay, you know what? I'll call that. 
I'll say it, ladies and gentlemen, Spider Armor Mark III is giving us that good flex. We've got the in and out wrist articulation with a set of those uh, bumpy knuckles like we just saw on our superior octopus. So, okay. You got some stuff going on here, Spidey. For our ab crunch. That is as far forward as we're going, and... Oh, actually, that doesn't negatively affect it. He can bend over backwards for you, ladies. That's not bad. He, of course, has the waist cut on him. The double-jointed... Or, double-jointed. Why do I keep on saying double-jointed today? For his thigh articulation, that's actually the best articulation we've seen today. So, kudos to you on that. Uh, we've, of course, got the thigh cuts here as well. The double-jointed knees. Which can go back a great degree. All right. Uh, there is a little bit of flash inside of the knee joint, keeping him from going back just that little bit further that he can go. Uh, but that's okay. That's actually not bad. For our rocker ankle, because we of course have the in and out, but it's barely anything uh, because the bottoms of these boots of his here are keeping him from going too far either way. Uh, we're only going about that far forward and about that far back. Uh, we're not getting a great dynamic range of motion here from Spidey, which is sad because it's a Spider-Man figure. Uh, also, of all the figures not to have them in this wave, Spider-Man doesn't have butterfly shoulders. Why, Hasbro? Honestly, why? You did so well with that Shang-Chi figure. And yes, I realize, a lot of this is new molding. Uh, the thighs are new because these pieces of armor are molded in. They're not just painted. Same thing with the boots. Same thing with the chest, which has a molded on spider. I think we've seen the back piece before, but the spine is molded, so... Of course, it's a new chest piece. Yeah, everything here is actually molded. It's not just painted. So, it gives a cool 3D effect... Even the unpainted parts of his armor, like this little butt plate here, and some inner thigh armor, is molded. That's cool. But you've nerfed the Spider-Man's articulation. Why? I'm gonna level with you guys. First, I'm gonna T-square with you. Then I'm gonna level with you. Bazinga. We're coming in right at about that... Just about six and a quarter inches. He's a little bit shorter, actually. But I think that might be because of the backpack. Uh, no, he's just shorter. Yeah, he's shorter than Shang-Chi. Alright, there you go. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Do I recommend this figure? No. Is it neat that they gave us a version of the spider armor? Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen a spider armor figure in quite some time. I've got the original spider armor figure, and it doesn't have great articulation from uh, Toy Biz back in the day. But it's the original spider armor, which it might be clunky, but it looks cool. His hand is kind of huge because it had a missile that shot out of it, but... I kind of want that spider armor back, personally. Uh, that being said, they gave us a spider armor. Cool. How are me unimpressed? Uh, they did some neat engineering with it. Uh, the gauntlets are new. Again, there's a whole lot of new mold in here, but if you're going to make a new mold, do something about the engineering. Give us the butterfly shoulders. Give us things to make it so that Spider-Man can do Spider-Man moves. I really wanted this figure to be the one I use in the thumbnail for the YouTube videos, or YouTube video of this unboxing when it goes up. It's not going to be, because it's kind of garbage. I'm not going to throw it into the bin. It's not quite that bad. But it's not great. If I need to give him a rating, just like White Rabbit, he's going to be a 5. 
he's got some neat molding here. The only thing that kept him from getting a lower rating is this. This little effect piece kept him from getting a lower rating than he got. Because that's the coolest thing about this figure, is this little spec that he came with. Unfortunate. Keeping with our theme, though, let's switch it back to another villain. Now, this is the reason that all of you came here today. I'll be honest, he's probably the hardest to find figure of the wave. Ladies and gentlemen, me and the boys back together again. That's right, we have him. We've got the Vulture. And not the Ultimate Vulture, which we recently got a figure of. Not the MCU Vulture, which we recently got a figure of. This is the third slash fourth version of the Vulture we've gotten in a very short amount of time. I'm kind of loving it. I never thought we'd get Old Man Vulture. I was, I was straight up about to go out and buy the Toy Biz version. I love the fact that we got Old Man Vulture. With an extra head to make him Vulture too, I'm really happy. <laughs> All right, let's get into what we've got in front of us. So, we've got, of course, our figure here of Vulture. We've got his name here. We've got Adrian Toom's face over there. We've got our little blurb all about Toom's up here. All the times you were auto-focusing, now you don't want to focus. Uh, okay, thanks. Our picture of the figure and all the remainder in the wave, which we are almost finished off with. Inside the box. We've got yet another figure with two trays. Uh, and that's standard backing that we've seen in the majority of the figures today, minus our Gamerverse ones. The second tray is here specifically for the wings. The wings of this figure were enough to warrant a second tray. Already loving it. Additionally, we've of course got our Demo Goblin head, which that's a face only a mother could love. We've also got our Vulture 2 head, not Adrian Toomes. I always forget Vulture 2's name. And, of course, we've got our Adrian Toomes figure himself. Now, we will put on our wings, but I'm going to put them on after we examine our articulation here. Uh seems as though, let's pop off this head for a second, just because I'm kind of curious, does this, yes, our uh, fur necklace piece here does indeed pop off, because I forget if Vulture 2 had that fur necklace. I believe Vulture 2 did not, if I recall. But there he is, to complete the me and the boys. Uh, But I've been so excited about Old Man Tombs, we're going to first examine this figure using the Old Man Tombs head. So, for our articulation, for our neck, yeah, this fur, it's negatively affecting that. Both ways. Although he can look up fairly well, which is great, because if I'm going to be posing Tombs, I'm probably going to be doing so with him flying forward. Look at the detailing on that face. I mean, seriously, look. Look at that detailing. It's... Again, of course, because the camera doesn't want to focus correctly. It's actually great. They've got wrinkles that are detailed in. Not... They've got liver spots. They show that the original Vulture was... Yeah, he was an old guy. Vulture also has... Butterfly shoulders. We've got the butterflies... With old man tombs. I'm not going to lie, they're not giving me as much articulation as they are on the other figures with butterfly shoulders, but I think they're just frozen up a bit. 
I can always fix that with some hot water or a hair dryer. For our shoulder articulation, better than a T-pose. I'll take it. He, of course, has the bicep swivel, the double jointed elbows. Oh, oh, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Old Man Tombs is giving us that good flex. And look at that flex that he's given us. Yes. 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 Thank you, Hasbro. Thank you. We've, of course, got the standard in and out wrist articulation. For our ab crunch. Really? That's as far forward as we're getting from him. And that's as far back. Tombs, my man, you gotta work on the stretches. You should, for all rights. Looking at your mold, you should be able to go farther forward, and you're not. Hmm. We do have, of course, the waist cut here. I will say, they gave Adrian Tombs here a very slender frame. Granted, for a guy that flies around everywhere on a pair of homemade wings, he'd probably be in some pretty great shape for a man of his age. Actually, for a man of any age, especially since I look at him, he's a stick. For our hip articulation. Not bad. Not quite as much as we got with the superior octopus, but about what we've gotten from White Rabbit. We, of course, have the thigh cuts, the double-jointed knees, which, if I can get the second joint of them, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, that's the best articulation we've seen today from a knee. Again, there's a little bit of flash inside of the knee here. It's making it so we can't go just quite all the way back. But dang. I wish my knees would do that some days. That's great. For our rocker ankles, we've of course got them going a disturbing degree in. An absolutely painful degree out. Can go forward quite some ways. And of course they can go all the way back on point. Now, we wouldn't be able to talk about a vulture figure unless, of course, we also gave the man his wings. So let us do exactly that. Now, as you guys can see, the places for the wings are in kind of an unusual spot. The first spot to click them in is up here on the actual shoulder joint. And the second place is here on the forearm. Now, the forearm I was expecting, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I was expecting the other one to be up here on the bicep, not, uh, not back on the shoulder. But, this is awesome! This is awesome! I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is really cool! I mean, look at that! Look at how cool that looks! In the end, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about toys. We're talking about action figures. Call them whatever you will. If they're not cool, why are you getting them? Look at that! Look at how neat that looks! That's really fun! I want to pose him dive-bombing in at Spider-Man! And now that I've got some stands to do it, I might just! And, just because I'm dreadfully curious, especially since we haven't done uh, his height assessment yet, I'm also curious what our wingspan is! I'm curious about that. So, let's take out our trusty T-square. 
it's over a foot. It's over a foot because this is a one inch difference. And I think there's about a one inch difference here. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we've got over a foot wingspan with our single pack vulture. None of the build to figure with the wings like we got with the MCU vulture. No uh, closed off wings like we got with the ultimate vulture. This one has articulated wings attached to his wrists. They're still whoops, giving us over a foot. That's awesome. <laughs> and let's see just how tall Mr. Toombs is. He's right at about the six and a quarter height. <laughs> Judging, yeah, right at about six and a quarter. And, since I know you guys have been wanting to see it, it's probably the reason why most of you tuned in to this. After all, we are talking about the meme quality of me and the boys getting back together. That's right. Now that we've got this figure with this extra head, that means that Hasbro has just completed with the Rhino figure, the Electro figure, and the Green Goblin figure from, of course, the Sandman and the Space Venom wave, respectively. We've now completed it. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys are indeed back. I can't wait to take a picture of these four doing the me and the boys pose. I'm going to be really excited about doing so. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is great. This is great. This is what I want from... Hasbro. You guys listen to the fans. You made us a classic Vulture in his classic style. And you gave us a bonus head to give us both Vulture 1 and 2. I love it. There's a reason that this and Shang-Chi are the hardest to find figures of this wave. There is. There's a reason. They're fantastic. If I've got to give him a rating, it's going to be another nine. It's going to be another nine. It's really high. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's a high rating, but uh, again, there's some things they could have done a little bit differently. Um, namely, I've been having a tough time getting the secondary head on here. I don't want to break his neck. It's kind of the same problem I had with the Jubilee figure that we got a couple waves ago where I couldn't get her bubblegum blowing head on at all, which is a tragedy because I really want to display her with that head because uh, I just made the neck joint too small. Or the joint is too big, the hole is too small. I love what they did with this figure. I love that he's got such a wide wingspan. There's a couple things that could have been done a little bit different. Um, again, his ab crunch doesn't have quite the movement it should, uh, nor do the uh, shoulder or butterfly shoulders here. But that's not saying it's a bad figure. It's not. It's not a bad figure. Let me be perfectly clear. Let me be perfectly clear here. This is not a bad figure. This is a fantastic figure. Hasbro, keep doing what you're doing here and just make it go up from here. Take the quality that you have, and it's it's pretty high. With this figure, it's pretty high. Just up that quality a little bit. You'll have a solid 10 out of 10. You'll have a figure that I am so excited about that I cannot contain myself. As is, this one isn't bad, but you can do a little bit better. Now it's going to be tough. Because now, between him and Shang-Chi, I don't know which figure to go out and tell you. I don't know which figure I'm going to tell you to go out and get. And we still have one more to unbox. 
before we even get to that point. Which, for the last figure of today's wave, because we've only got one of them, we've only got one remaining, and it's another Game Reverse figure. It's another one based off our Spider-Man PS4 game. Ladies and gentlemen, the Velocity Suit. So, let's get into it. Now. They call it the Velocity Suit in the game. They even call it that here on the back. Uh, other people know it as the Ends of the Earth Suit. Because uh, this has all the costumes that were in Spider-Man for the PS4. They've been featured in comic books previously. With the exception of the actual Spider-Man PS4 game suit. Uh, this is the third one in the Game Reverse line that we've gotten of Spider-Man. And I've heard they're going to make Game Reverse versions of the Avengers, which, let's do that. I'm pumped to see that happen. Let's take a look at what we've got, though. We've got our window pane front here, our game render on the side here. It's not even an artistic rendering, it's just a game capture. Our photo of our figure here, our wave of figures here, and our little blurb all about the Velocity Suit. Now, I will say Hasbro would be nice if when you ship me stuff, you didn't get it all screwed up here. Thanks for wrecking my perfectly nice box. I'm appreciative of it, Hasbro. No, really, I'm s I'm super appreciative, and I'd love to talk about it. Inside. We've, of course, got, just like the other Game Reverse versions, we've got the Spider-Man PS4 game logo here. We have our other foot of the Demo Goblin, meaning this pile of random body parts is now complete. Which means you know it, I know it. Our next review is going to be our build to figure We've, of course, got Spider-Man in his Velocity suit. And we've got this. Now, just like our previous Game Reverse Spider-Man figures that came with the Thwipping Web and, as we've seen today, the Face Web piece, I'm super excited about this particular effect. Now, there's a reason behind that. And, for our demonstration purposes, we're going to get out Superior Octopus again. So, we know that Spider-Man whips out his web at people. We know that he can, in various mediums, shoot the web across the face, making it so that his opponents are blinded and trying to get this weird sticky substance off of their face. With this figure of the Velocity Suit, we also have the ability to completely web up an opponent. That's right. It slips over, as we've seen many a time, especially in the Spider-Man video game, when Spidey whips up his enemies, eventually they get all webbed up and they can't do anything. These web effects now make it so that you can have one enemy completely webbed up, unable to move, struggling to escape, while you've got another enemy With webbing, coating their face, them being blinded and unable to continue the battle, these effect pieces are going to make for some amazing photos. Combining these two together, along with some very generic looking goons, you can make some awesome photos. And that's exactly what I'm planning on doing with them. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm planning on making some killer photos with these. 
and I'm planning on making them for the thumbnail for this video on YouTube. Now the question of the day is, who's going to be thwipping those effects? Is it going to be our Spider-Man Mark III armor, which we already discussed and it, uh, it was lacking. It was certainly lacking. The best thing I'm going to say about it is it was lacking. Or is it going to be our Velocity suit? Well, let's take a look and find out. So, for our neck articulation, he can look up a decent degree. It's not beautiful, but it's decent. For our downward neck articulation, it's okay. For our shoulder articulation, which again, no butterfly shoulders for actual Spider-Man. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to know. I I'm gonna speak directly to the manufacturer. Hasbro, what are you doing? What are you doing, Hasbro? You gave us Shang-Chi, Superior Octopus, and Vulture, all of which have butterfly shoulders. Why not Spider-Man? Why not Spidey? Give us the most agile superhero with butterfly shoulders. Crazy thought. For our shoulder articulation, though, we're getting a T-pose. Uh, he's got a little bit too much armor plating up here to make it so that we can't get his shoulders up any higher, so we're getting a T-pose out of him. Uh, we've, of course, got the bicep swivels. The double joint... Ladies and gentlemen, once again today, we got that good flex. Which means we had Superior, Octopus, Velocity Suit Spider-Man, Vulture, and Shang-Chi. Four out of six figures that gave us that good flex. That almost makes up for that abysmal flex that was given to us by White Rabbit. We also, of course, have the standard in and out wrist articulation on him. For our ab crunch, I'm hoping for good things here. That's as far forward as we're going, and that's as far back. It's not horrible. It's better than we had with Vulture. I think it's even better than we had with the Spider-Man Mark III armor. Uh, it's not great. But it's not awful. We've of course got the waist cut here. For the hip articulation. The best hip articulation of the day is in Velocity Suit Spider-Man. The absolute best comes from... Okay! That's surprising. For our... I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just kind of taken aback by that. We've, of course, got the thigh cuts here. We've got the double-jointed knees. Which can go a decent degree back. They're not going a fantastic degree, but they're going a decent enough degree back. Uh, no boot cuts on the figure, but we do have the rocker ankles, which are going a pretty, a pretty painful degree in. And a pretty disturbing degree out. Uh, that's, that's a pretty decent range of, moosh, range of motion forward, and he can go all the way on point back. Um, now, of course, since you guys can't see at home, I will note all the spider markings on here. Once again, this is a whole new mold, just like with the Spider-Man Mark III armor. Uh, this is all raised. Uh, all of the cuts in here are actual raised cuts. Um, that's on the legs, on the thighs, on the calves, on the back. All of this, even this weird polygonal butt cheek, is it's all raised. Uh, even though you can't really see it, there's even a little bit of detailing there on the back of his neck. And they did some great detail work. All of the uh, 
thin spines along his hands here are also raised up. The forearms, the biceps, all of it. But if you're going to do that much work in doing a whole new mold, why not give us butterfly shoulders? Why not? Why not give us an ab crunch and ab swivel like you did with Beast? Why, Hasbro? Why? Tell me why. Anyway, enough of me getting copy striked. <laughs> what in the world, Hasbro? You gave us some of the best figures that you've ever given us in this wave, and you gave us some ones that were just phoned in. This one seems kind of phoned in. You did a lot for it, and I'm really grateful. But you phoned in so much else on it. Why? best thing about this figure is right here. This is going to become a major part of my toy photography. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This, this is going to become a part... These two pieces from our two Game Reverse figures are going to become a picture... Every picture I have with Spider-Man is going to have these. It's going to have them. These along with uh, at least one, maybe even two whipping webs are going to be in every one of them. Because they're awesome. Heck, I might even see if I can make a way to get one of the thwipping webs, attach it to here, so it looks like he's actively webbing up that villain. Because that would be just amazing! It's like giving us the ability to make the comic book come to life. And I'm happy for that. For the actual figures, you tried, Hasbro. You tried. Before I give any last judgments, our old friend the T-Square is back, and Velocity Suit Spider-Man is coming in at, yeah, just at about that six and a quarter inches again. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller than six and a quarter, uh, but he's right around there. So all of our guys were in scale, yeah, pretty well this wave. Uh, they all kept to a pretty consistent height, so that's a nice thing. Before we get to our Demo Goblin, we've had six figures. <sighs> Two of them blew my mind. Two of them seemed phoned in, and two of them were the Game Reverse ones, which... I love the Spider-Man 4 video game. I love it. It's amazing. I don't want to stop playing it. I want to keep playing it on stream for you guys. Heck, if I could, I'd even play it today. But I got things to do. Sorry. Honestly, for the Velocity Suit Spider-Man, he's going to get another 6 for me. He's going to get a 6 out of 10. Is he great? No. Is he awful? No. It's better than White Rabbit, but it's not anything I'd say to rush out and get. On the other hand, I know it's probably obvious, but I'm giving my figure of the wave to a tie. That's right, I'm breaking the rules because I'm making up the rules. I'm giving it to a tie. Shang-Chi and Vulture are both so stunningly good. If you're a fan of memes, if you're a fan of classic comics, if you're a fan of Spider-Man, if you're a fan of Marvel, get these two. Get these two, get these two, get these two. If you're a fan of Mortal Kombat, Grab him. If you're a fan of kung fu movies and Bruce Lee, grab Shang-Chi. If you're a fan of classic Spider-Man villains, if you're a fan of the me and the boys meme and you want to make it in real life, if you're a fan of classic Spider-Man villains, grab Vulture. These two are my figures of the wave. They are fantastic. If I have to crown one winner, if I absolutely have to, 
Not saying that either one of them is bad. Seriously. If you see these two figures out in the wild, buy them. They are wonderful. Buy them ASAP. Don't think about it, just do it. Buy these figures. Before the scalpers do, because they're going to charge you a lot more than the stores. If I have to choose one winner, I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's Shang-Chi. I love the Vulture, I love everything they did with him. I adore this figure. This Shang-Chi figure blew me out of the water. I really wish I would have saved him for last. He's that good. With the ten sets of hands that we got for him, the ten hands, the five sets of hands that we received for this figure, the two nunchucks, the great articulation, the amazing sculpt, with everything they did for this figure. I mean, just look at this. Look at this pile of disembodied hands. Which, there you go. Now you also have Thing from the Adams Family. It's a little joke for you. Bazinga! <laughs> anyway. Grab this figure. No matter what. No matter what you're a fan of. You like generic kung fu movies. You like Bruce Lee movies. You like Jackie Chan movies. You like... If you like any movies of dudes punching each other while dressed in geese, get this figure. He's fantastic. I love every part of it. If you're a fan of the Iron Fist and you want him to go against another kung fu master, grab this figure. Grab this figure immediately. Don't question it, just get it. You will not regret it, especially since Shang-Chi is going to be a major part of the Phase 4 of the MCU. His movie's already been announced. Get this figure. He is my figure of the wave. I, I was giving it to him and Vulture. I'm giving it to Shang-Chi. He is that good. Well, that brings us through all of the standard figures of the wave. So, that means we're all done here. See ya. No, I'm just kidding. That means that we have a bunch... We've got a mess of body parts here. we got to do something with them. So, let's get into our build to figure, shall we? Now, we've got that torso that came with Shang-Chi. Our legs that came with our two different Spider-Men. Both Velocity Suit and Mark III Spider Armor. Mm. If that'll get on there. Now, this is the second Hobgoblin figure we've gotten as a build to figure. Uh, most people that are new to the hobby might not remember we actually got an ultimate version of Hobgoblin some years ago. Uh, and he was a build to figure. But it's a weird version of Hobgoblin that's got a backpack instead of a glider. Uh, and he's he's a neat figure, but he's not the classic Hobgoblin that we all know and love. Especially since this isn't even Hobgoblin, this is Demogoblin. I don't know why I keep on calling him Hobgoblin today. He's giving me a very Hobgoblin vibe. But no, this is actually Demogoblin, uh, as seen from the fact that he's slightly more demonic looking. Uh, and with that ridiculous tongue. Now, I do have one major complaint with this figure. And that's this. He is not a big beefy boy. Do, do not play, don't play the meme. We don't get to say our catchphrase today. He's not it. He is just slightly taller than Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi was put into a case all on his own. By that same token, as we were saying how we are completing the me and the boys meme, he's the same height as the Green Goblin figure that we received previously. In fact, the arms are even a redo of this figure. Uh, 
We've seen these boots before. The legs are pretty generic. The hands and the chains are new. The head is, I believe, new. Uh, although this might actually be a reuse of the Hobgoblin head that we had from the... I believe that was actually part of the Space Venom wave. Yeah, that was part of the Space Venom wave. Venom Space Knight. <sighs> this figure could have been a single pack. He did not need to be a build to figure. The only thing that made him build to figure worthy was this glider. And honestly, as we saw, this all fit in with White Rabbit. This could have been a single pack. This could have easily been single packed without needing to be a build to figure. That is a massive complaint. That is a massive complaint of mine. But let's get into the articulation here. For our neck articulation, it's pretty much non-existent because of our cape here. He's only looking that far down and that far up. That's pretty much it. For our shoulder articulation, Our scales are making it so that we're not quite getting a T-pose out of him. Uh, ironic, as the arms were straight out when they were in the packaging, uh, and I had to put the pegs down to put them into the sockets, but it's ironic we're not even getting a full T-pose. Uh, we do have the double... We've got the bicep swivels. We've got the double-jointed elbows. We are not getting a good flex out of him. Uh, there's too much flash here on the bicep, as well as here on the wrist gauntlets, which apparently are just held down by friction. Uh, they aren't actually molded there, so yeah. These are complete redos of those same wrists that we got from, and the same arms rather we got from Green Goblin, uh, just with some new pieces put over it, including the chains, which are also separately held down by just friction. Uh, we've got the wrist joints, which are the standard in and out wrist joints, uh, with no kind of pumpkin bombs or anything, but I don't recall if Demo Goblin used pumpkin bombs. I know it's a pretty common goblin trope to use the pumpkin bombs to throw at people. I don't remember if Demo Goblin did I think his big thing was this flaming glider. Uh, we, of course, have the ab crunch, which is going that far forward, and a pretty decent degree back. That's actually the farthest back we've gotten out of anybody today. So, that's something. Uh, we do have the waist cut here, uh, pretty cleverly hidden by the belt. We've got our pretty standard hip articulation from him. Of course, we've got the thigh cuts, says that's where we put on the thighs. Or put on his legs, rather. Uh, we've got the double jointed knees. They can go a fairly decent degree back, but as you can see, there's a little bit of flash inside of the knee once again, keeping it from going back any further. Uh, I really do wish Hasbro would do something about that and just kind of cut this down a little bit back here. Because uh, that's the thing keeping him from having just better articulation. Uh, we do have boot cuts on him. Which means these are, yeah, just standard reuse legs with boot cuts. Uh, with only the lower parts here being new. And I don't even believe those are new. Uh... Again, I believe those are the same as the Hobgoblins. Uh, we've got the rocker ankles here, which can go a pretty decent degree out, pretty painful degree in. Uh, pretty, that's an all right degree forward, and he can go all the way on point. Now for the big thing, of course, putting him onto his trademark glider. Which, yes, he sits in rather well, and he looks, if I'm being honest, rather menacing. He looks rather menacing when uh, put all together. I love the fact that they finally gave us a stand so that, yes, I now have a flying goblin 
without needing to worry about a third-party stand. It's pretty nice that Hasbro finally gave us a stand to pose our goblin on. I'll be honest with you guys, as a build figure, it's kind of weak. It's kind of weak. It's kind of... It's kind of Okoye weak. Uh, now, it's not saying I don't love my Okoye figure. She's great. I love Danai Guerra. Danai Guerra. She's an amazing actress, and her job as Okoye was great. I'm very happy that I've got a figure of her. But it could have been a single pack figure. And it's one that they mostly did mold reuse on, just like here. This is mostly mold reuse, redone with a couple new things here and there. The glider is the big thing that they had to actually sculpt out. Uh, almost looks like the glider's head moves, but I know it doesn't. Uh, but it almost looks like it does. Is it neat? Yeah. Is it essential? It's cool to have a demo goblin. It's the first time we've gotten because he's not Hobgoblin, as I was saying before. He is indeed Demo Goblin. Uh, now, Demo Goblin has gotten a figure previously, but he was not in the Marvel Legends wave. He was a Spider Man classic. Uh, and that line, it was very early on. It was prior to Marvel Legends, they were doing these figures called Spider Man classics, uh, which is what pretty much came to be Marvel Legends as we know them today. But it's not perfect. Um, that old figure, it had some character to it, but it wasn't grand. And this figure, it's an improvement, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's not great. And as a build to figure, it's really, really rather lacking. I could have seen many other characters being a build to figure for this Spider Man wave uh, before having it be Hobgoblin. Demo Goblin. There's so many goblins, I keep on mixing them up. I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's Hob, Green, Demo, New. That's without even getting into the jack-o'-lanterns. Plural. As a build to figure, he's a disappointment. As a figure, he's cool. If I have to give him a rating just as a figure, he's a seven. If I have to give him a rating as a build to figure, he's a four. He's a four. He's mostly mold reuse. He's cool. I'm probably gonna have him in my collection kinda doing this thing, looking as menacing as I can get him to, uh, bent over as much as I can to try and make it look like he's swooping down at Spidey without making him look silly. Uh, that's going to take some posing on my part, but honestly, he's only okay. Again, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, Demo Goblin's okay. The figure to get is Shang-Chi. This beats this by a mile. The only cool thing here is the stand and the glider. Beyond that, I really don't care. It's sad to be that apathetic towards a member of Spider-Man's rogues gallery that I've really been wanting a figure of. They just maybe could have done better than having him be a build to figure. Alright. And that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's it for today. Uh, sorry it wound up being a short one. We didn't have that much customizing to do. We didn't have actually any customizing that we did. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you go on to our twitch stream to catch this unboxing live over here at twitch.tv forward slash vampire preacher that one right there this one gotta remember left hand uh 
Make sure that you watch me on Twitter so that you get updates about when we've got these things going live. And, of course, if you didn't know, go on to our... You know about the YouTube, right? Go on there. We get these all cut up, memed up, edited for clarity, shortened in length for the times when I went on and on, like how I couldn't get those tentacles Doc Ox to go on. And make it so that it's pretty fun to watch. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, keep it nerdy.